What up, what up, peace guys, it's STS here for another simple review, first first uh, review back from my, since I've been back to my grandma's, awesome time, uh, I've always spend much time with my grandmother, uh, best time in the world, these last couple times though have been kind of sucky though lately, because the movie, the movie Tuesday that I had, because I don't really prepare myself now, um, well, uh, the grumpy old man and, uh, and grumpy old man, that made it everything great, I, I love that film. But the other films last time because it really sucked bad. Um, but um, but the first movie here is a film that nostalgia all the way. Nostalgia. This is my nostalgia collection here. This film. I mean, I, I think it's my first animated one. I think I don't know if it isn't. Well, this is an animated film. This is. It came out in 1987. But I saw this as since I was born in 1990. I used to see this. I think when I was a little kid, and this is one of the first movies I ever watched. And this film was fucking dark. This film gave me fucking nightmares as a child. And now I was like, you know, I always had thought, you know, why? When will they make this movie back? When I'm, when, when can I watch this movie again? Can't find anywhere, you know. Well, the movie I'm talking about is The Brazil of Toaster. This film has got to be one of the best films I've ever seen in my whole life. It, it stays in my childhood and it stays in me as a 25 year old now. It is amazing. Uh, people, like I just saw a thing about Nostalgia Critic with a top, well, it's an older video, a top, because he's a cool, I like his videos, but he did a video a little back, said top 11 films he would never do one. This is one of them, and I'm like, well, why? I mean, I don't know, this film, it just, this, I hate movies when they're animated, I always hate the song playing and whatnot, but the songs in here, uh, especially the movie, main, uh, B movie, uh, the B movie, Dance or something or it's a B, B, B movie night or I don't know it's the B movie whatever monster B, whatever it's when they're at the appliance store um, and then there's worthless at the very end you know at the at the uh, at the uh, damn it I can't I'm losing focus stay with me people no at the ding uh, or junkyard uh, but this one here the songs are great. I mean, the plot is basically five electrical appliances dumped. They feel dumped by their owner, which I, for their master, which I thought was either, was this a summer home? Or was this the house that was in? It's in a cabin. And that's the thing I thought. I thought it was, I maybe mean, was it a real home? Was it a summer home? Or was it a, a vacation? Was it just a real place? You know, what they end up saying, well, we're dumped. We wanted the master. The master. The master. Which is basically Rob. Who was this little boy that used to live there? Well, he was the parents. Well, he was the kid of the parents of this house, cabin or whatever. And everybody looked at him because maybe they had imagination with him or something like that when he was younger. Um, but um, they go on this adventure, and there's the characters. I mean, you have uh, which some of the characters I don't know the names, but I mean, I got them on here in the Wikipedia thing. Dion, I didn't know a chick played Toaster. Deanna Oliver. Uh, Timothy E. Day plays Blanky. He's electric blanket with an innocent childlike Demeter. Tim Stack plays Lampy, which he's pretty funny in this. J and John Levitz played the radio, which the thing about the radio character right here, which I thought was was Ro was Robin Williams, because I mean I didn't know I did, and I didn't know this till now. I did not know this until now. I didn't know that John Lovitz, because I saw it on the back of the book, it says, featuring the host of catchy songs and the voices of Saturday Night Live's alumni, Phil Hartman and John Lovitz. Now, John Lovitz plays the, uh, yeah, he plays the radio, which is, the, he basically, the character of radio, is, he just, he mimics, like, old baseball announcers or whatnot, like, shows and has humor and whatnot. Phil Hartman only has secondary characters. He's not even the main people. He plays... But also, too, that people kind of be, which critics got fucking, they ne they pissed on, was that Phil Hartman's characters that he played, he plays two characters, he does impressions. Uh, like the, the, the air conditioner, which that was a fucking fucked up scene as a child watching, with the whole, like, coughing up, like, he, when the, the, the thing argues with him and he blow, it blows himself up, exposes himself, he gets fixed later on. But, um... But he does a Jack Nicholson impression, which is okay. But it's like, why couldn't they just use his own voice? But it didn't mind me. And then he does a Peter Lore impression, which I don't know who the hell that is. The actor, he plays a lamp in the uh, appliance, uh, uh, the, the uh, appliance store, um, where they get captured to the appliance store. But um, 
I mean, it's a good film, and it's scary, too. I mean, one of the scenes I can talk about is when they're all asleep in the tent, or after Blanky makes a big tent, which I don't know how he got big, but the infamous scene of the toaster having a nightmare from um, being de be, uh, burning, well, it shows him as a kid, uh, uh, Rob as a kid, and making a toast, and then he leaves a, a bread in, and he actually makes it burnt, and uh, black clouds go every fucking where in the house, and it took young... Rob, the son, I think that's his name on here. What the hell? Here I am, being retarded. Can't know what the hell it is here. Oh yeah, what, yeah, Rob the Master. So that's what it is. And you know, Rob now is in college. And what the hell is this? No. Well... Yeah, I mean, but, you know, young Rob, and then uh, seven uh, Hellwire, forks come after him. Well, yeah, because the clown. It's like being Bray Wyatt, and, and the scene with the fire, and then up top of the, he's on top of the dang, she's well, whatever toaster is, he's her hands is on the dang like shower thing, you know, and there's water and it falls and electrocuted and whatnot, and he wakes up from dream. That scared me as a child. Um, um, the scene that the water when they're in the water where the, the sweeper goes mad this is when I had fear of sweepers I was a kid and always thought uh, the sweep, I always had these nightmares of sweep uh, like the dirt devils picking me up in their mouths and he, this movie made probably it started my whole my dad used to put the sweeper on me so I hated it as a kid um, he, this is what probably the, set the fear of that crap I had but I overcame that fear when I was a teenager. I mean, even before that, when I was like maybe 10 or 11, 12 or whatever. But no, when my dad does that joke around about it. I mean, the jokes, I mean, it's great. And there's, like, the, this, I mean, but the scenes, uh, like, the, like the nightmare, um, oh, wait, I was trying to, they get to the appliance store. Oh. Well, the key scenes was that, the appliance store is when they do the B-movie mania or whatever song. Uh, they, and then they go back to the, yeah, because when they get to the house, they find out where he is, and once they get there, oh, Rob and his girlfriend just head back to the cabin, so if they could wait a little bit more, the appliances, they could have got their master then, because he said, oh, I'm going to use this, because it's in the, the, I like about this is that it's in the, it's in the modern times, it's in the, eight, well, 80s, and, whatnot, and it's more, what they go to the cabinets, old school stuff, you know, they're all old school appliances and whatnot, but when they get to the house of his, the appliance store was great, but it's all, like, all fucked up parts and everything, but it's great, uh, but when they get to the house, they get to these futuristic, you know, things like the, the, there's a nice big lamp, there's a computer. But well, then they meet their old buddy who's their old appliances. It was an old TV, you know, um, who's still, he was there before in the cabins, which is pretty cool to see. But the people are jealous of what they would choose. Because Rob, before I'm, t I'm talking too fast, he wanted to use, he's, in, he's going to college, he wanted to use uh, some of the, uh, like the, like the desk lamp, all this stuff, for the dorm room. Which I would understand because all the stuff would be for a door room, a toaster, a desk lamp, a uh, radio, an electric blanket, and a sweeper. And I think that's the best for it, you know. Um, but there's, I mean, it's sucky. And um, they end up going to the dang junkyard, which I forgot how they went to the junkyard. I think that, well, because they got hit from those, yeah, because those dumbass, jealous uh, appliances, because... Rob's oh, the, the Rob's like, the master's not gonna take us. We should take old shit. But then I'm going to the junkyard, which with the the uh, the magnet, uh, like a movie. You, 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 know, like you see a horror film, and you see like you know the monsters coming out and do, like the hallway, do do, 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 you know. This one had this, and the, the magnet was creepy as hell as a child watching, and worthless. Like, there, these cars about to get crushed up to pieces. This tonight. This saved the night. I mean, I don't know how it goes, but it's such a good quality ch children's film. And I definitely enjoy it. I definitely recommend this film. This is a A+. 
I will watch this again. I'm going to try it again with my son. My son's two years old. I try to get him to, uh, to get, uh, me and my wife, and, uh, well, my wife's seen this before, too. Me and my wife and my son, we try to watch it in, my, in this bed, in our bedroom here. But he didn't really care. He's going to jump around and play, but I recommend it. Uh, this is uh, one of the best anime films they, uh, back in the day. It's dark, and I love it. Uh, there, the special features here. Now, it's Disney distribu distribution distributed it, it, but they never did it. But I think this deserves a blue. And I, 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 you know, Wikipedia even said, as of 2015, no, there's no talks of having this as a Blu-ray, which is bullshit. I think this, I want this more. And I was excited because I saw the special features. They have the making of the Bloodyville Toaster, but when I get on it, it's only nine minutes long. I go, wow. And then when I play it, it's just the kid talking about, oh, the, this was your year, and then all the sequels, too. I mean, there was nothing. I thought it was going to be like a, like a, a 30 minute or a 10, 20 minute, like saying, oh, this is how we made it. Nothing. So that's the doubter of this. I, I want to see the making of this film. What not? But like I said, you know, it's a weird story. You know, five appliances. You know, you feel dumped. You know, but they have their own, they have their own char characteristics. You know, um, which I can say. You know, the themes. Uh, um, it's yeah, because like the director said, it, it's like uh, what it would be like to be an appliance and feel good when you're useful and help people. He also explained that the films being the film's themes include a fear of being abandoned, wanting to be reunited with somebody you love, the opposing forces of feeling you're worthless, and the joy of redemption. The another point of notion is that valuing things from the past and taking them into the future, both in terms of objects and relationships. All of the main characters have plans and uh, personality of their own. Like, Blank is a security blanket, but is insecure without his owner. The bright lamp is mentally dim. Vacuum is supposed to hold everything inside, but has a nervous breakdown. Toaster is warm and reflective, and so can easily empathize. And radio is constantly switched on and entertaining. So, I mean, it was alright, you know. And they end up getting a, uh, what Rob finds them, though, because that's from the whole junkyard scene. And they get some, they get them back to the tour. Uh, back to hit the dorm, whatever it was. But, uh, I, yeah, the sequels, there's the, the Brave Little Twister goes to Mars, and there's go to the rescue. I mean, Mars, I watched it once. I remember watching it once. I think I got it from Day's video or somewhere. And, and I'm probably going to check it out next time. That'll be my, because I might do some child movies, you know, just so my son would watch, because that's one time I would watch a children's animated flick, or like animated flick with my son, or not when he's gone. But, I, you know, it's just, this was pretty great. Uh, just like the, it's just, it's just great. I think I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop shutting up. Get this film. Try to find it. Run it. Buy it. I mean, it's great. I think you guys really enjoy it. One of my top favorite uh, animated flicks of all time. Such my childhood. And now, but I'm out of here. This is STS. Peace. Good to talk to y'all once again. Like, comment, subscribe. Jeez. Just like the video. Watch the video. That's all I care about. I'll see you guys later. Peace.